Now another higher education story, but one that doesn't involve politics or scandal. At Marshall University, students are building what's called a differential analyzer. There was a time when the differential analyzer played an important role in helping scientists solve complex math problems. It's an old school machine that Marshall professor Benita Lawrence is using to make math easier to understand and fun. Clark Davis produced this outlook as part of our science series, Lab 304. Once upon, once upon a time, there was an ocean, but now it's a mountain range. Something unstoppable set into motion. Nothing is different, but everything is changed. Alrighty, here we go. One thing I want you to take away from here is that if you have a dream that you really feel in your spirit and your heart, go for it. Because that's what I did. Marshall math professor Benita Lawrence is using an old idea to teach math in a new way. Sure, it looks like an elaborate director set, and in a way, it is. It's no toy, though. It's a differential analyzer, and it costs $10,000 to build. This machine solves uh, differential equations. Which are merely equations that have rates of change. Um, as the variables. Everything seems to be okay. Lawrence and says the differential uh, analyzer can be used to construct curves from information about the way the curve changes or its derivative. She says observers can watch the solution take shape and acquire an understanding of how it's constructed by watching and listening to the machine. You don't just put, push the buttons and watch it just go zoo, 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 and you can see it on the, on the integrators. Scientists used the differential analyzer in World War II to help develop bouncing bombs used to destroy hydroelectric dams in Germany. Its solutions also helped in calculating the characteristics of soil erosion. What they would do is they take a, a physical system motion and describe it with its rates of change. And then when they solve that, they get a solution curve that tells them, you know, positioning of something, whatever you're modeling. And that machine was the only thing that could do that at the time. Lawrence saw her first differential analyzer at a science museum in London in 1995. That machine was built in the 1930s by Arthur Porter, an undergraduate physics student at the University of Manchester in England. When I discovered that there wasn't a publicly accessible one available in the country, we decided we were going to build one. And we started with this little machine that we call Lizzie. Lawrence says Lizzie is named after another mechanical marvel, the Model T Ford, also known as the Tin Lizzie. Lawrence says her team built the prototype as an educational tool. And I just thought that this was a beautiful representation, a physical representation of mathematics. And so many students struggle with mathematics. In some sense, they think it's a foreign language that they're not really, um, that they don't know much about. They come in, they're like, oh man, I hate math, you know, and then they come in and look at this erector set and they're like, you know, I played with an erector set when I was a kid. I built all kinds of neat stuff. It was really, it was really fun, you know. It goes right here, goes to here, train of gears. About four years ago, after Lawrence mentioned the project in a proof writing class, Richard Merritt of Huntington decided to make the machine the focus of his senior thesis. He's now the differential analyzer team leader. It makes you feel really good about yourself, especially when somebody comes in and says, it really helped me to, you know, understand. Even though that they've never been exposed to it before, they try in their mind to understand, well, I know what this is. This is a disc that spins, you know, it's on a gear, it's, it's got this shaft connected to it. I can understand that, you know. Then you take the abstract part and you, you know, you, you put it right in their mind, you know, at the same time. You have to gain some experience to be able to use it. And that experience is what gives you this new insight about um, these kind of functions and rates of change. How much can using all these gears help a student learn to actually be able to see it in a physical sense? Well, the gears at first, when you first look at it, they kind of look a little confusing, but you just follow the motion. Huntington and senior Saeed Keshavarzian is working on a master's degree in mathematics at Marshall. He says the project has been a fun learning experience. It's great because you can actually see math. Math is pretty abstract, you know, it's 
the closest you get to is like uh, some symbols on the paper or a graph, but you're looking right there and you say that integrator is at zero, so it should peak, or that this other integrator is at zero, it should be curving up, concaving up or concaving down. And then they can watch how when that integrator is turning, how it's feeding the input of this integrator and how it's moving this function, changing this function at what rate it is. And that's something you don't, you don't see, even with like Excel. Excel programs, you, you can't see it as well. I mean, this is just, it's 3D representation of, of a differential equation. And so you put the equation in here and then you can graph it out, graph it out on there and it'll show you what is exactly happening? Right, right. You, you build the, the differential equation here. This is the section of interconnect where you build it and you could plot what comes out of each integrator versus the independent variable time or you could just plot what comes out of one integrator against another integrator. When the, the motion makes the path across and then goes through here and comes The differential down, analyzer team began building this larger system in the summer of 2007. It's named after Arthur Porter, who built the first analyzer using Meccano parts, the British version of a rector set, in the 1930s. The students decided they wanted to name the machine, this machine after Arthur, and he told me that he was, at that time, was called Art. And it has uh, multiple meaning, you know. I, I think it's very artistic, and it's named after Arthur Porter. How unique is that to use a kid's tool in here and you're working out equations? It just goes to show you you can build something great from anything. I mean, kids kids have this stuff every day to their, in their hands, but it's amazing that somebody actually thought of this. I mean, it's nice to build little Lego houses or whatever, but I always think when they build robots and things, out of, things of that sort, it's really nice. And this was, this is, I think, even more interesting than a robot or, or anything that they build out of Legos. This actually solves math equations. Team leader Richard Merritt plans to continue his research on the differential analyzer when he starts graduate school next fall. If you step back a moment and think about how they used to learn things a long time ago, before they had all these advantages, all these computers and things like that, if you think about how they used to learn things, they really did, they ha actually had to learn them. You know, they didn't just, they didn't just get it. You know, they didn't just say A, B, C, or D, you know, pick B. There's the answer. They had to learn it. And I think that these old styles of teaching and these old values of education, if they were more incorporated into now, nowadays, then um, you know, people might, might learn a little bit more. The position of Professor the Lawrence expects the analyzer to have a long life in Marshall's math program, teaching students how to solve complex math problems without computers. As much as I believe that we would really build these, these machines, I also believe that the work students will do and teachers and professors will do with the machine will have a major impact on mathematics education. Another life, another galaxy. For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, I'm Clark Davis in Huntington.